Okay, everybody, welcome to Coty Auto what? Tally. Auto Tally. It's not a bike place, I just don't know how to say it. Okay. It's well, a biker cafe. It's a biker cafe. Open on the weekends. It's not the weekend. That's why it's not open. Oh, it's closed. <laughs> okay, yeah, it's closed. So we came all the way over from Henley and it's closed. Thanks, Dan. <laughs> nice one. But they do amazing pano chocolate over there, the size of dinner plates, as you will see. So we've come out today to for Sam to ride this bike for the first time. Not ridden it yet. Um, ridden it here, yes, he has, it wouldn't have got here. But uh, what does he think? No, on the fence. So you're so, a 1250 Rhino rider, yeah? It, well, I'm gonna tell you now, it's not a cheetah. It's not a cheetah? You said they were like cheetahs. Yes. They're not cheetahs. Well, you're not riding it right. It's like a baby rhino. A baby rhino? If the GSA is a rhino, because it's so freaking big, this is just a, like a smaller version of it. Okay. Anyway, we're gonna do a so full it's review. possibly a baby Dilly rhino, squat. okay? We'll do a full review. We go off to Dilly Squat. We'll uh, squeeze the throttle, the little thing on the right hand side, the throttle, on the way there, and see how we get on. That? Over and out. I checked the phone and they hadn't. They just come to see the trout at Bybury. It's interesting though, there's nothing to buy here. Is it? We've got rope, rope, rope control there. We have arrived at, look at the queue. Oh my God, what are they queuing for? They give it milk, Jeremy's juice. Queuing for that and the loo. Well, I don't know where we're gonna park. Where should we park? Where are you parking? Are we actually even gonna stop? Oh, it's a joke. There's a, there's a, it's a joke. There's a queue. Have you been in there? Have you been in there? There's nothing in there. This car park's a bit of a mess, Jeremy. Jesus Christ! It's like you've driven your tractor over it for four hours. Well, I'm not going in there. Fuck that. Are you? Righto, welcome to Life is a Ride. We've pitched up at the classic Motorhub Bybury. Riding the GSs all day. Today I have with me a non-GS1300 rider, Sam. He's been riding a 1250 for six months. Yeah. And he's jumped on his neighbours. Get that, he's nicked his neighbour's bike. And I'd like his opinion over and above the 1250. What do you think, Sam? Well, I've made a list. Read through it. I'll start with the dislikes. Well, let's go for the dislikes then. Okay. Squeaky boots, I tell you. Yeah, these, these are great. You could oil those, you know. The seat position yep. is, feels lower, and therefore the, my knees are more bent. So I feel more in it and my knees are slightly higher. So there's a bit more room on the 1250 than this for you? Defo. And you're not, you're not super tall, are you? Six I'm 5'10". You're 5'10". With a short leg. 29 inch leg? No, 30. 30. So I'm not, I haven't even got long legs no. and I felt that. Okay. What are you? Similar? 32. 32, so what? And, and I you feel that? No. You, you, you do. You no, just, I don't. You've just got used to I've it. I've just got used to it. There you go. 
Started off in road mode. Yep. Wasn't overly impressed. Well, no, it's soggy, isn't it? It's soggy. Yeah. Um, come on, give me some more. Yeah. Is this it? Popped it up to Dynamic Pro. And yeah, she woke up. Wakes up. But I think it needs a tune. Yeah. Flat spots in the power. What, in road or Dynamic? Both. Both. Six, roll it on on six at a higher speed, just doesn't give anything. It's definitely not as comfortable as the GSA. No, well, you got to three hours and I was waiting for uh, it. Um, yeah. And you started saying, ah, hang on a minute. Yeah. And you spent hours in that seat on that 1250, hours. Mm, and not five, six hours, easy. three weeks ago. Um, not a murmur. No. Both Richard and I were whinging. The heat, I think it, get, it gets hot. It kicks off a lot of heat off that engine. You're noticeably that? more than the GSA. Yes, it's a warm day today, but noticeably more. Well, your Picos was 11 degrees. Maybe it's, I, I can't say the heat would be any more. Maybe not, but who knows? Right, what I do like is its size because it is a lot smaller. It's more nimble. You can filter through traffic. You can throw it around more than the GSA, even though you know I can ride the GSA. Can you? Well, I saw the you said it in your videos. I, I saw the pannier scraping on the ground in the Picos. <laughs> I think the aerodynamics, that screen, and whatever you want to call these wind deflectors. He has got a Puig extender on, though. No? Yeah, but I had this down most of the time. Okay. And then I put it up and I've played with it. The aerodynamics are good. And especially with a Torx 5, a peaked helmet, that thing wants, that's noisy. Yeah. And it worked okay. Hang on a sec. Whoa, the Torx 5 is noisy? Yeah. Okay. I like the looks. They've really grown on me. I didn't dislike it at the beginning, but the headlight, I like the looks. I'm a fan of yours. I think all black looks great. Well, your this, channel's called Triple Black, so you'd have to buy Triple Black. I would have to buy a Triple Black. This, this looks ace. I think this is a very elegant colour combo. I do really like this. And what I do like about this one more than the others is this option, 719. All these extra... I mean, look at the rear sets and pegs compared to yours. Much smarter. Oh, that was the other thing. Oh, the exhaust. Oh, the exhaust that doesn't make any more noise. But you pay a thousand pound for. Love the look of that Akrapovic. Looks gorgeous. But what's wrong with mine? It's hideous. <laughs> <laughs> that looks pony. <laughs> Chuck it in the bin. That like a can of tuna. So you're replacing yours with a uh, Jekyll and Hyde. It came out well, yesterday. Was, right. So my GSA has got an Akrapovic. Yep. In dynamic mode. It pops, bangs, burbles, like, it's, it sounds awesome. Yeah. For a big bike. Yeah. And when I was throwing that around in the Picos, it sounds great. It's banging and everything. So without trying to get a pun in here for the Jekyll and Hyde, you put the Jekyll and Hyde on that, you're going to get that. I'm sure. Well, but that, that, there's I'll no noise that comes out of this. When you're riding this bike, riding it, you hear engine noise only. And it's not even great engine noise. You know how you know, a, a, a straight four engine will just rev up high and they sound fantastic. These boxer engines, they don't sound that great. No. And therefore you would, might want to compensate with a bit of exhaust noise yeah. instead. Yep. And you just don't get that. No, and you actually said at one point you're getting more noise out of the engine than you are the exhaust. Defo. Yeah. You can't hear the exhaust. No, no. Which is a shame because you sort of ride a bike with the exhaust oh. notes. Yeah. Like. That's how you Bit learn to know car, what... You listen to the revs, not look exactly. at the speedo. So we've gone through, but well, back to the likes then. The, because it is lighter, it feels lighter anyway, because it is more nimble, the braking of it, it's, le it's not as hard to get it slower, you know, slowing right down. It's instantaneous, isn't it? Yeah, you can, you can ride on the this, brakes. You can ride you're... this without braking. Yeah. On bends, I mean, yeah. you just use the gears. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gearbox is okay. Still a bit clunky like the GSA, but... So... That's, that's my overall opinion. And you've come off the 1250, it's your first ride of it, and that's your opinion. So You can't get better than that, surely. I've done loads and loads of miles in, in, on the GSA and the Picos. 3,000? 
not no you didn't come down from France with us did you so yeah 1500 so 1500 miles still a lot of miles and a lot of hours in the seat yeah all day sometimes bit of off-roading you're the right man for the review to compare the two anyway and you almost back to back yeah so the main negativity here is the engine sound the seat comfort can you can fit you can fix this with there are aftermarket seats right yep they are there are sergeants do one uh, which is supposed to be good or even just a gel yeah a gel cover so out of all the negatives it's not actually that bad is it no they're not no it's a cracking bike yeah this is the thing when you ride it you're like there's nothing to fault like really because it's just an absolute stonking bike why wouldn't it be it's a bmw but the question for me is do i change the 1250 which is what everyone's been asking themselves and some people have done it is do I change my GSA to one of these? It's called evolution, mate. Move forward. You don't always have to. No, but we're at the classic vehicle hub. Do we really want to be driving number 28 over there for the yeah. last 100 years? Yeah. No. That's cool. Well, That's stay cool. on the 1250 then. That is evolution. It is evolution. I don't, I'm not debating. And I, I, I'm, I was, I was, I was the most sceptical person about that bike until I actually did some mileage on it. And, and I'm known for slagging it off, moaning about moaners, as, they, as they've been said. But I've now become to think that the bike is a two-trick pony. It's great for motorway riding, it's great for twisties, like you've just said, a sports bike, and it's great for off-road. I want it... I would have liked to have done a bit of off-roading on a 1300 out in the Picos for sure. Yeah. Yeah. I think it would have been great. I did off-roading on the GSA with Road 6 tyres. Yeah. On that track from Sotres yeah. down to, can't remember. No, with no problem at all. It, it had difficulty because yeah. of the, the weight. But to be fair, that was probably down to me because I stopped on a slope like that and had to get going again and it just you skidded up. Do it, yeah. Which was actually Peter's fault. I'm playing Peter. Because he stopped on the bridge and I had to stop on the slope. He was just looking for a river to do some fly fishing. He was he? looking for a river to do some photos. Anyway, so but the, it was worthwhile doing that because you work out what tyres you want and what you don't want. So, so you, the, you've got these, which are, you know, if you go to the Picos again and you want to do that track, absolutely. I take no, those all day long. No, no problem. But you ride in, you ride in the UK and you want to, and you want to get. Um, you know, you're doing some wet, wet weather riding. Then so then, this is these Road Sixes are phenomenal. I've got them on my GSA. I wouldn't change them. Looking at these two bikes, specifically this colour versus this colour, this looks like your twenty-three thousand pound bike. This looks like your fourteen thousand pound bike. So if you're on the edge on colours. You can stand in the showroom, when you've got this thing covered in mud and crap like I have, and so has Sam, this still looks like the green one, still, what's the colour name? Well, I think they call it the Tremontana, Tremontana don't they? Tremontana, yeah. It looks like a £23,000 bike. So, and also the rally is that, as well. Is that, I like the rally. Yeah. The blue and white one. Yeah. Yeah. The problem with the rally is, it comes with this panel here in white. It does, and if it looks odd. If you turn around and look at mine, and mine, I've got rally colours on mine, that's in black. And with the rally colours on mine, it looks really good. But it's just the idea from why do we make these videos? Well, to give you guys information on whether we like them, how they ride, are they comfortable, what the exhaust note sounds like, what the wind protection is like, but mainly things as well, like colour. When you stand out here in the daylight and look at them both, which do you want? Sources, of course, is I'm, I'm, I'm with you. I'm with you on this. This looks a really elegant, smart color combination. I think yeah. it's the gold that really pops. It does pop, and, and the black is a bit more subtle and bland. Yeah, you could call it that, but some people like that. Some people like it. it's just just a really cool combo. Still, because some people might want that. You know, they've got all black gear, and they just might want that stealthy look. Yeah. Anyway, just our thoughts, anyway. So to sum up, what's happening? I'm not buying one yet. You're not buying one. Ben, oh. you listening? 
I'm going to wait until the adventure is announced before I make a decision. A couple of months. October, apparently. Yeah. And we're in June. Yeah. OK. Right. Is it time for a coffee? Time for a coffee. Let's At go. At the Classic Motor Hub. Have has, they have a cafe. It's open Classic Motor Hub. certain times. It's open at certain times. It's open today. Let's have a look at some of these classics. The classic motor hub. I'm not even going to try and tell you what that is, because I have no clue. But they've got some beautiful machines here. I do know that's an aerial atom. That's not an aerial atom. But that is. I'm being drawn to the Aston over here. Excuse the walking look. We've lost the mic. Well, if you want a little trip out to Bybury, this is the place to come. The other uh, hangar's got bikes in it as well. So beautiful, beautiful calm and gear there. That's not calm and gear, what am I talking about? It's a Porsche Roadster. Well, let's get back to the review on the GSs. It's quite conclusive that Sam is smitten by that bike. He's just going to wait, which is a sensible thing to do. I'll be doing the same. So, long short of it is, he's a 1250 GSA rider, he jumped on that and he absolutely loves it, <laughs> well close anyway, close, let's see what they've got in here, oh look at that, And one for the bikers. Do not touch. Well, thanks for watching, guys. Please subscribe. Guys and girls, must have forget the girls. Please subscribe. There'll be lots more content this summer. Lots of reviews on parts for the GS as well. So clickety click. 
Next uh, part in is we've done hanger for the exhaust. We're going to do headlight protector by BMW. That's coming out in the next few weeks. Well, it's coming out probably by the end of this week. It should be out by Sunday. So click sub subscribe. I'm going to teach you how to fit it, its benefits, its advantages and its disadvantages. One of the advantages I do see of it is it can be dismounted very quickly. And it's quite a clever design. So if you think you're going to go off road, you can dismount it. Subscribe and book yourself in with the beer and take a look at the next video. Thanks for watching. Thanks for coming along.